My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Not only is the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth, positive at the time of the destruction of Old Covenant Israel, the Jerusalem and the temple, the resurrection is likewise posited as a direct inseparable corollary as the fulfillment of God's Old Covenant promises made to Old Covenant Israel. When Paul anticipated the resurrection, the adoption, the redemption of the body, Romans 8, 23, he went ahead to say in Romans chapter 9 and verse 1 to 3 that the doctrine of the adoption, i.e. the redemption of the body, belonged to Old Covenant Israel after the flesh. You've just got to catch the power of that. What does that mean? Well, it means that if God's promises, God's Old Covenant promises to Old Covenant Israel, to Old Covenant Israel after the flesh, if they have not been fulfilled, then Israel remains as God's covenant people. In Romans chapter 11, Paul anticipated the taking away of Israel's sin. And by the way, that time of Israel's salvation, he calls it life from the dead. Romans 11, verse 15. But notice what Paul has to say about the time of Israel's salvation. Now, the time of Israel's salvation is the time of the resurrection. Isaiah 25, 6 through 10. The day of Israel's salvation, the time when salvation to all of the nations would then be fully extended, come into full bloom, is the day of the resurrection. Now watch this. Paul promised, all Israel shall be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Watch. For this is my covenant with them. So, the time of the taking away of Israel's sin is the time of, of the fulfillment of God's covenant promises. But the time of the taking away of Israel's sin is the time of the resurrection. It's Israel's salvation. Therefore, the time of the resurrection is the time of the fulfillment of God's covenant promises to old covenant Israel. Thus, once again, if the resurrection has not taken place, God's covenant, God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel, old covenant Israel after the flesh, remains valid. Israel remains God's covenant people. Now I want to tell you, for the amillennialist and the postmillennialist, that's fatal. Pure and simple, that's fatal. Because both of those paradigms tell us, oh, well, you know, God was through with Israel at the cross. How could God be through with Israel at the cross if Messiah had not yet come to take away their sin and bring in resurrection in fulfillment of his promises to Israel? It doesn't work, folks. It just doesn't work. And so when, as we are looking at the promise of the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15, let us be reminded that Paul said the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 would be what? When Hosea 13, 15, or 14 would be fulfilled. That's, a, that's God's old covenant promise made to old covenant Israel. The resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 would be when Isaiah 25, verse 8, would be fulfilled. Isaiah 25, an old covenant promise made to old covenant Israel. The resurrection of Daniel, excuse me, of 1 Corinthians 15 would be when Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 would be fulfilled. Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 is an old covenant promise made to old covenant Israel after the flesh. You see how it goes? You cannot put the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 off into the future without thereby affirming that old covenant Israel remains God's covenant people. However far, however long you extrapolate, delay, postpone the resurrection, it is that long that Old Covenant Israel, after the flesh, 
remains God's covenant people. Undeniable. So we'll see you on the flip side.